Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. We welcome all of you to our Sunday celebration service wherever you are. I'd like to welcome you to join us as we praise and worship our Father. Let us just pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you with thanksgiving in our hearts, Lord, for being so wonderful to us and protecting us, O Lord Almighty, that we've been able to see this day. We glorify you, O God, in heaven. And we pray, Lord Almighty, that you receive our worship with thanksgiving, O Lord, in heaven. May you, O God, stretch your hands of blessings upon your people, even as they watch, O God Almighty. Let us all receive and partake of that which you released upon us this day. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Someone celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate Jesus this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hey. Hakuna kama we buwana. Hallelujah.
Jesu akanaka Jesu akanaka Jesu akanaka Mungu wa baraka Mungu wa baraka Mungu wa baraka Jesu akanaka Jesu akanaka Yeah. 
that you have given to us that we may get to praise you that we may get to worship you that we may get to pay our homage to you for you are the Lord of Lords and you are the King of Kings you are the great I am you are the Alpha and the Omega we bless your holy name for this great day of celebration as we celebrate your goodness your masses your loving kindness may you receive our sacrifices, O oh God, even as we offer ourselves to you, our bodies, our souls, and our spirits as living sacrifices, minister to us, even as we submit ourselves to the power and to the authority that is in your written word. We bless your holy name and we honor you, for we ask it in Jesus' name. And all of us, we say amen. Amen. We would like to welcome each and every one of us to our Sunday celebration service here in Deliverance Church International, Kayole. You are very much welcome. Join together with us, together with your family. Get your Bible in place. Get your notebook. Get your pen. And expect to hear from God in, uh, in, uh, this day in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I would like us to turn to the book of Luke, chapter number 6, and verse number 30, all the way to verse number 38. Give to everyone who asks of you, and from him who takes away your goods, uh, do not ask them back. And just as you want men to do to you, you also do to them likewise. But if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is, is that for you? For even sinners do the same. And if you led to those from whom you hope to receive back, what credit is that to you? For even sinners led to sinners to receive as much back. But love your enemies and do good and lead and hope for nothing in return. And your reward will be great and you will be sons of the Most High for he is kind to, th to the unthankful and evil. Therefore be merciful, just as your father also is merciful. Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. Mounting up through the channel of generosity. Mounting up through the channel of generosity. Our God is incredibly generous. He is over the top generous. He is generous in nature. He is generous in character. In Romans chapter number 8 and verse number 32. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also 
freely give us all things. This is a very powerful portion of scripture. It describes the nature, the character of God who is our Heavenly Father. He delivered up his son for us. And the question is this, will he not also freely give us all things? Our God indeed is over generous. In Ephesians chapter number one and verse number three, blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly, place, in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. This is the nature, this is the character of our God. Our God is over the top, generous. Blessed be God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing, not just one spiritual blessing, but every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, our Savior, our Redeemer, our Master, our Lord, and our soon coming King. In John chapter number one, verse 16, and of his fullness, we have all received an a grace for grace. And of his fullness, we have all received. None of us have not yet received. Without exception, each and every one of us, we have all received an grace for grace, masses for masses, love for love, loving kindness for loving kindness. In James chapter number one and verse number five, if any one of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given unto him. Our God is generous in nature. Our God is generous in character. A generous savior, therefore, should have generous disciples. There is no way you can claim to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, and yet you are not generous. The hand that is generous gathers and it keeps the harvest. The hand that is generous gathers uh, the harvest and it keeps the harvest. The world is composed of takers and givers. Are you a giver or are you a taker? The world is composed of takers and givers. The takers eat better, but the givers sleep better. The takers eat better, but the givers sleep better. Christian generosity is not a matter of finances. It is a matter of faith. Christian generosity is not a matter of finances. It is a matter of faith. The church treasurer counts what we give, but God counts what we keep. This is revolutionary. This one should capture your life. The church treasurer counts what we give, but God counts what we keep. God is over the top, generous. He is generous in his forgiveness. He is generous in his mercies. He is generous in his goodness. He is generous in his grace. He is generous in his loving kindness. Why should we be generous? The basic reason is very simple. Why should we be generous? The basic reason is very simple. Our God is a generous God. If you we are, we carry the nature of God. If we carry the genes of Jesus Christ, being our redeemer, then we ought to be generous. Generosity is good for us. Why is generosity good for us? It helps us to have the right attitudes towards others and a healthy perspective on our possessions. 
Generosity helps us to have the right attitude to others and to have a healthy perspective on possessions. Generosity is an expression of love, is a way of saying that what we have is not ours. What we have belongs to God. The Bible says in Psalms 24 and verse number 1, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The earth is the Lord's and all that is and all its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. We are stewards of all that God has given to us. We are not owners. What more? God promises to bless those who are generous. What more? God promises to bless those who are generous. In Proverbs 11 and verse 25, the generous soul will be made rich, and he who waters will also be watered himself. He who waters will also be watered himself. All around us are people with needs who need our generosity. All around us, in our neighborhood, in our fellowship, in our home sales, we have people who need our generosity. They need our grace. They need our mercies. They need our forgiveness. They need our love. They need a warm and a compassionate attitude an environment from us. So you have a responsibility to be generous to the people around you, the people in your home cell, people in your local church. You need to express a generous and a compassionate attitude towards them in the name of Jesus Christ. There are those people around us who need our hospitality and our encouragement. There are people who are dying for encouragement because of the situation that they are in. L be an encourager. Be a Barnabas. Be a Barnabas to your neighbors. Barnabas, his original name was Joseph, but he was nicknamed Barnabas, the son of encouragement. His ministry was ministry of encouraging others. You may not be a pastor. You may not be a pastor like me, but you can still have the ministry of encouraging your, your neighbors, your colleagues, those who are uh, the Lord will bring into your life. It doesn't matter what you are able to give, big or small, little or large, it will make much difference in the lives of people and also in the kingdom of God. It doesn't matter the amount, how big, how small, what God is looking for is what you are left with. God counts what you are left with. The church treasurer will count what you are given, but God knows how much you have in your bank account, uh, uh, how much you have in your, uh, in your hands. In John chapter number 6 and verse number 9 to verse number 13, John chapter number 6, verse number 9. There was a land here who had five barley loaves and two small fish. But what are they among so many? Jesus said, make the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place. So the, man's, the men sat down in number about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to the disciples and the disciples to those sitting down and likewise of the fish and as much as they wanted. So when they were filled, they said to the disciples, gather up the fragments that remain so that nothing is lost. Therefore they gathered them up and filled 12 baskets with the fragment of uh, the five barley loaves which were left over by those who had eaten. This young boy, he was attending the crusade of Jesus Christ. The mother had packed for him some barley uh, bread and some fish. He did not have an idea 
what would happen. He did not have an idea what would happen during the crusade. Later he was amazed. He went home with a testimony that in the hands of Jesus, Jesus does, is not looking for a big quantity. God, Jesus is looking for something that we can surrender to him, that he can multiply. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how much, uh, how much you are going to give. So long as it gets into the hands of Jesus, Jesus has the power, he has the ability to, uh, to bring multiplication. I believe this young man, this young boy went home excited, went home to give a testimony. Guess what happened, my mom? Guess what happened? The bread that you gave me, the fish that you gave me, Jesus multiplied it and he fed 5,000 men and, uh, and it estimated about 15,000 women and children as well. In Luke chapter number 12, verse number 32. Luke chapter number 12 and verse number 32. Do not fear, little frog, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Verse number 33 and 34. Sell what you have and give and give arms. Provide yourselves money bags which do not grow old. A treasure in the heavens that does not fail. Where no thief approaches, no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart is. Where your treasure is, there your heart is. The secret of true generosity is the joy of the Holy Ghost. The, jo the secret of true generosity is the joy of the Holy Ghost. What could you be? You could be generous. Be like your heavenly father. You need to be like your heavenly father. You need to carry the traits. You need to carry the genes. You need to carry the character. You need to carry the nature of your heavenly father. Our heavenly father is a generous father. He gave all he had and, and held nothing back. You may feel you have very little to, uh, to be generous with, but if you have little yet, you are generous with all, it, with all that God has given to you. In God's eyes, that is total loyalty. God is looking for total loyalty from our lives. He is not looking at, at the quantity. He is looking at your loyalty. How loyal are you to your heavenly Father? You demonstrate your loyalty by your generosity. Be generous in giving yourself to God. Be generous in giving yourself to God. In Romans chapter number 12 and verse number 1 to verse number 2. Romans chapter number 12, verse number 1 to verse number 2. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the masses of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Do it often. It is worth repeating. Offering your body, offering yourself to God as a living sacrifice, we continually tend to take back from God, that which we have offered to him. The tendency of many people is to take back the things that they have already offered to God. Give God all you are. Give God all you have got. Give God all you are. Uh, all you are. Give God all you have. Give him your body. Give him your will. Give him your mind. Give him your soul. Give him your spirit. Give him your skills. Give him your time. Give him your finances. Give him your possessions. 
Give him your total being. Give him your life. Give him your future. He will do better with your life. When you have given it to him, he will do better for your future. When you have given, surrendered your future to him, surrender your future, surrender your family, surrender your business, surrender your, your ministry, surrender uh, your job to the Lord. Give all to him generously without reservation and without regret. Give to your heavenly father without regret, without reservations. Be generous in your attitude towards others. Be generous in your attitude towards others. And generous attitude judges, criticizes, complains, and condemns, and rejects others. That is an generous attitude. An ungenerous attitude will judge others, will criticize others, will complain about others, will condemn others, will reject others. But a generous attitude is gracious, compassionate, and makes allowances, interpret things in their most favorable light. Be generous with your forgiveness. Husband, wives, children, employers, employees, neighbors, brothers and sisters in the same family, be generous with forgiveness and mercy as God has been generous to you. Be generous with encouragement. Be generous with thanksgiving and praise. You need to praise people in public. You need to reprimand people in private. Praise people in public. Reprimand or rebuke people in private. Be generous with, unco with unconditional love. Be generous with unconditional love. Spread it far and wide. Even on your enemies, your false accusers, your persecutors, even your trespassers. Jesus commanded us to pray for our enemies, to bless our enemies. Why? That is a blessing. When you pray for your enemies, when you bless your enemies, the Lord will get to know your, compassion, your generous attitude and he will bless you. Even in the midst of your enemies, David said that the Lord will set up a table in the midst of your enemies. It is when you bless your enemies, it is when you pray for your enemies that the Lord will set a table in the midst of your enemies. Be generous in your attitude to yourself. Once you have been generous to God, when you have been generous in your attitude towards other people, it will be safe for you to be generous to yourself. God has forgiven you. God has forgiven you. God has accepted you. So you can forgive and accept yourself. Deal with the spirit of self-condemnation in your life. The devil would like you to be under the torture of the spirit of self-condemnation. God has given generosity to you so you can accept and enjoy and make most of his gifts in your life. You need to be generous in your attitude towards yourself. He, God has welcomed you as his son. God has, uh, has welcomed you into his kingdom as his daughter. He has given you a robe. He has given you a ring and all the best he can find. Do not settle in the corner of eating with the pigs like the prodigal son who was in a particular corner eating the pod with the pigs, feeling sorry for himself. Do not allow yourself to be in that corner where, uh, where the prodigal son found himself. You need to be generous with your resources. Give a proportion of your income. 
specifically for God's work. 1 Corinthians chapter number 16 and verse number 2. 1 Corinthians chapter number 16 and verse number 2. On the first day of the week, let each one of you lay something aside, storing up as he may prosper, that there may that there be no collection when I come. On the first day of the week, this is on a Sunday. Sunday is the first day of the week. Let each one of us lay something aside, storing up as he or she may prosper. Can you say amen? Give regularly. Don't give sporadically. Don't give intermittently. Don't just give when you feel like giving. Be a regular giver. God loves a cheerful giver. God loves a regular giver, not a one-time giver. You only give when you feel like giving. You need to be a regular giver because God loves a, a cheerful giver. Don't give. You give. You can also give in response to a particular need in the church, in the ministry, or as you can also give as an expression of thankfulness for something special that has happened in your life. Maybe you are involved in a road accident. Other people were injured. Others were harmed. But God spared to you. Don't just take it for granted. It is not luck. It was the mighty heart of God that was at work in your life. Look for an offering. Bring an offering of thankfulness to the Lord. You are working in an office. Many of your colleagues in the office, they have been terminated, but you have been retained by your employer. It is not because you are better than those who have been terminated. Look for a thankfulness offering. Look for an offering of giving thanks to the Lord. Because that will give God reason for you to be retained by your employer. Give cheerfully. Give generously. Give worshipfully. Give prayerfully. Give sacrificially. Give powerfully. Can you say amen? Be generous with your time. Be generous with your skills. Be generous with your talent. Be generous with your sacrificial service to God. Be generous with all the things that you have. Be prepared to share with the needy brethren. They are needy brethren at a time like this. When we are under a temporary local down, there are some brethren in the, fel in the family, in the fellowship of Deliverance Church Kayole that need your help. Bring dry food here in the course of the week and we'll be able to give that, uh, the, 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 re, the relation of the food to the needy brethren in the fellowship, in the family of Deliverance Church Kayole. Be ready to lead even when there is a high risk for losing your money. In Proverbs 19 and verse number 17, he who has pity on the poor, he who has pity on the poor leads to the Lord and he will pay back what he has given. He who has pity on the poor, on the needy, led to the Lord, and he will pay back what he has, what he has given. There is always a high risk of having to let go that which God has given to you to help the poor, to help the needy. Be generous in the use of your home. Be generous in the use of your home. Hebrews 13 and verse number 2. Do not forget to entertain strangers, for by so doing, some people have entertained angels without knowing it. Do not forget to entertain 
strangers in your home. Yes, we are living in the days of COVID-19, and all of us, we are scared. But the Bible is commanding us, we should not forget to entertain strangers. For by so doing, some people have entertained angels unawares. Be generous in a quiet way. Forget about blowing trumpets where you can keep your generosity in secret. Don't blow your trumpet when you are helping others. Do not give a testimony in a fellowship that if it were not for me, certain fam this family could not have survived. Resist the temptation to let others know what a good Christian you are because of what you have done. Help others anonymously. Let God take notice of your generosity. And when God takes notice of your generosity, he will reward you in the open. Help others anonymously. Help the needy anonymously. Buy food for the needy brethren and surrender the gift to your local church for free distribution. Bring the food here in the course of the week. Buy, go to the supermarket, buy food and bring it here. We are going to distribute to the needy brethren. The blessing will be yours. The blessing will be yours. The reward will be yours because of your generosity. Generosity is the truest revealer of a person's greatness. Generosity is the truest revealer of a person's greatness. Generosity has converted more sinners than zeal, eloquence, and learning. You can ac accomplish by generosity what you cannot by force. You can accomplish by generosity what you cannot do by force. Generosity always brings its own reward. This kind of a person who is generous will seldom be without friends. God will ensure that you have friends who will stand with you at the time of need. Generosity is a grace that all can understand and practice. Generosity is a grace that all can understand, can practice. Each and every one of us who is listening to this message, each and every one of us under the sound of my voice, you can understand the grace of generosity. You can practice the, ge the, the grace of generosity. There is nothing that, that the world understands and values more than true generosity. There is nothing that the world we are living in understands and values than the grace of generosity. Today, you can purpose in your life that you are going to mount up. You are going to mount up by the grace of generosity. It is by the grace of generosity that you are going to mount up in this year, 2021, the year of mounting up to greatness, to great height, to new levels. The grace of generosity will have to be at work in your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? Can you say amen? Can we rise up on our feet in the mighty name of Jesus Christ? In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Say, my Father, my Father, my Father, my God, I command the blood of Jesus to overcome any power drawing me backward from my divine appointments 
In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. My Father, my God, as I pray, let any evil covenant causing evil lateness to good things in my life die by force and die by fire. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. My Father, my God, as I pray, break every multiple covenant of my ancestors, bringing backwardness into my life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. My Father, my God, as I pray, cause me to escape from every danger of demonic lateness in any project in my life, in my family, in the name of Jesus. My Father, my God, as I pray, let the power to take the first position in every good thing I do in my life possess me by fire, possess me by force, in the name of Jesus. My Father, my God, as I pray, let the wind of promotion carry me by force to where I am supposed to be. In the name of Jesus, my Father, my God, as I pray, anoint me with your power to be a first class candidate in every good competition of life. In the name of Jesus, blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus, take me to the mountain top of life. In the name of Jesus, blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus, take me to the mountain top of life. In the name of Jesus, my Father, my God, as I pray, let the spirit of generosity come upon my life without measure. My Father, my God, let the grace of generosity come upon my life without measure. In the name of Jesus, blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus, destroy every plan to delay my breakthroughs. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, my Father, my God, as I pray, I declare, I declare by the power of God or that I can do all things through Jesus Christ who do strengthen me in the name of Jesus. My Father, my God, as I pray, let every curse of setbacks that is working against my life be terminated by fire, by fire, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, my Father, my God, as I pray, let every inherited evil delay prevailing in my life die by force, die by fire, in the name of Jesus, my Father, my God, as I pray, arise and deliver me completely from the grip of devils, lateness, now and forever, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, my Father, my God, I bless your holy name for your word, for your word says, for your word commands us to give, and it will be given even to us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be put into our bosom. For with the same measure that we use, it will be measured back to us. May you cause us, may you cause us to be true disciples of our heavenly Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, we bless your holy name and we thank you.
for hearing our prayer and for answering our prayer in Jesus' name. Let's give a mighty clap to the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. You are out there. You are not born again. You have not yet given your life to Jesus. L allow me to pray for you. Allow me to pray with you. Say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I admit that I'm a sinner and I need your forgiveness. Today, I open my heart that I may receive you into my life as my personal Savior, as Lord over my life. Lord Jesus, I am asking for your forgiveness. I am asking for the cleansing by the blood of Jesus. From today, record my name in the Lab's Book of Life. I thank you for your forgiveness. I thank you for your cleansing. For, we ask, for I ask it in Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer, Jesus Christ has come into your life. And from this moment, you need to, you need to start testifying to your family members, to your friends, that from today, the 5th of April, 2021, you have surrendered your life to Jesus and you have given your life to Jesus Christ. Put your both hands on your chest. Let me pray for you if you are sick in your body. I will release the healing power of God upon your bodies, upon your businesses, upon your jobs, upon your investments, upon your marriages, upon your families. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, by the anointing that is at work in my life, and by the power of God at work on this altar, I address every sickness, I address every disease, every infirmity that has afflicted your people. Right now in Jesus' name, I command every satanic arrow to jump out of the bodies of God's people and to return to the sender and to destroy the sender. I command every demonic arrow fired into the bodies of God's people to jump out of their bodies and to return to the sender and to destroy their senders in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I speak the healing of God to the businesses of your people, to the jobs of your people, to the marriages of your people, to the families of your people, to the enterprises of your people, to the investments of your people. Right now from this altar, I release the healing of God even upon every department of the lives of your people, the spiritual realm, the physical realm, the financial realm, the, the dear Lord, the material realm, even the, the emotional realm, even the mental realm. I release the healing of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive the healing of God in every department of your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Celebrate your healing now. Celebrate your healing now. Right where you are at home, right where you are in that office. Celebrate, celebrate. Give, give praise, give praise to God for that miracle, for that mighty deliverance, for that healing in Jesus' name. Amen. I say amen. Worship is not complete without an offering, without a tithe, without a sacrifice. And therefore, I'd like you to prepare a special offering, a special a sacrifice. You prepare your tithe and you pay in your tithe uh, into Deliverance Church Kayole Bank account, Kenya Commercial Bank. You start with the M-Pesa pay bill number 522, 522, and the account number, number 11, 79, 72, 54, 76. Let me repeat one more time. You start with the M-Pesa pay bill number, 522, 522. And then the account number is number 11, 79, 72, 54, 76. Please, as you invest in God, as you invest in God's kingdom, as you invest in this ministry, let me know. Send me a text message on my telecom number, 070, 070, 340-310. Let me repeat one more time. 
said the message, not the money. Said the money to Deliverance Church Kayole bank account. Then send me a text message so that I can take time to pray for you, to lift up your business to the Lord, to lift up your, your job to the Lord in prayer, to lift up your in investment to God in prayer. And as you do that, may the Lord reward you in the open. May the Lord cause you to prosper. May the Lord cause you to flourish. May the Lord cause you to blossom. May the, may the Lord cause you to advance in every department of your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let us join together in the words of the benediction. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely goodness, surely goodness and mercy, miracles, signs and wonders shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen.